Hello guys, this is Paul McWhorter with TopTechBoy.com and I am here with lesson number 11 on using your BeagleBone Black Microcontroller. <clears throat> what we're going to do in this lesson is we're going to create a dimmable LED. And the way this one is going to work is, you remember we did a dimmable LED in lesson number 10, but with that one we did analog reads off of a potentiometer and we smoothly went from the LED being off to the to the LED being fully on based on the analog readings that were being made off of a potentiometer. This time we want to control the brightness of the LED with buttons and what we want is is that it's going to start off if I press this button it's going to get a little brighter get a little brighter get a little brighter get a little brighter every time I press it. If I press this button, it's going to get a little dimmer, get a little dimmer, get a little dimmer. So it's sort of a digital push button. And what I want is if I press the button 10 times, I will go from all the way off to all the way bright, and I want it smoothly changing brightness in between there. <clears throat> all right, let's look at this circuit and see what we need. You're going to need an LED. You're going to need a current limiting resistor. The current limiting resistor is 330 ohms. You will connect the LED to pin 14. Let's make sure that's 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14. We're going to use pin 14 as a PWM pin and that will control the brightness of the LED. You notice we use pin 2 to establish a ground rail for our circuit and we use pin 4 to establish a power rail for our circuit. So this is the PWM part of things, <clears throat> and the LED will get brighter or dimmer depending on the PWM signal that is put on there. We have two push buttons. The push buttons are using an external pull-down resistor. I have been unable to figure out how to activate the pull-up and pull-down resistors on the Arduino board by using Python. I tried, I looked, I researched, I gave up, I went back to external pull-down resistors. <clears throat> Let's look at how this works. This leg of the button is connected to ground through this resistor. You can see this read pin is uh, let's see, I've got to go back and see what that read pin is. We are using pins 23 and 27. We are using pins on P9, pin 23, and pin 27 to read. On header P9, pin 23 is connected over here to this leg of the button. If the button is not pressed, this leg of the button is going to read ground because it's going to see ground through, through this resistor. So you're going to be sitting there and you're going to be reading zero or low because it's going to be sitting here looking at this. If you press this button, <coughs> this will be connected to this and this <coughs> wire will directly see a dead short to your 3.3 volt rail and it's going to see a 1. So if it's sitting there button not pressed, it sees a 0. When you press the button, it sees a 1. Very important, use a 1000 ohm resistor or more. If you don't have a 1000 ohm resistor, use a 2000 ohm resistor. Don't use a lower resistor because you can burn out your Beagle Bone Black. <clears throat> Similarly, this pin, you see that this pin on this button is hooked up to the rail. This leg <clears throat> of the button is hooked up to pin, what did we say, was that pin, pin 27? That was 23, 25, 27. Let me just make sure. I have trouble, yeah, it's pin 27. And you got to count these 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, 11, 30, up to 27, <clears throat> just like that. Okay, then we have pin 27 connected to this leg of the button, and then that also goes through a pull-down resistor to ground. If you're sitting there, if the button isn't pressed, this sees ground through the resistor. If you press it, you short it out to the rail, and you see the, you see the rail. That's how pull-down resistors work, and now you know. Go ahead and hook this circuit up, and then we will move forward with developing some code. Okay, <clears throat> we got to talk a little bit about math before we jump into the code. I've talked about this in the earlier lessons, but you might think <clears throat> if you want to go from zero to full bright with 10 button pushes, you might think that you would do something like the first button push, <clears throat> put in a 
10 percent PWM 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. And so with each button push increased by 10, the PWM percentage, you would go from 0 percent to 100 <clears> percent <throat> in 10 steps. This is the problem with doing that. When you go from 10 to 20, you're going to see a big change in the brightness of the LED. When you go from 90 to 100, you're going to see almost nothing. You're going to see almost nothing going from 70 to 80. All the action is happening at the low end of the scale. So that's just the way our eyes perceive brightness. So we need to create an exponential. We need to create an exponential function <clears throat> between 0 and and a hundred and not a linear function. So let's go through that math. I will need to back this up. I'll spin this around. Okay, I will back out my zoom so you can watch me writing, hopefully. <clears throat> and you can also, <clears throat> you can see this on my website, toptechboy.com on lesson number 11. You can see it there if you have trouble following along. But hopefully with modern computer technology, you will see this. Okay, we're going to have a <clears throat> we're going to have a variable called BP for button push, and it's going to start off at zero saying that the button has not been pushed. If we push this, that would be button, if we push the bottom button, uh, or let's see, if we push the top button, we want to make things go brighter. So if I push the top button, that is going to be a BP of one. If I push it again, two, again, three. So I count the number of times that button is pushed, and every time I push it, I increase the uh, bright, I increase the BP variable by one. If I come down here and press this one, I decrease the uh, <clears throat> the uh, BP variable by one. And so BP, that variable is going to keep track of the net number of pushes. If I go up, 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 down, up, up, down, 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 down. So up is going to add one to BP, down is going to subtract one to B, uh, from BP. <clears throat> but I told you that we don't want to go linearly from BP to duty cycle. We need an exponential curve. Well, what's our first point? <clears throat> Initially, nothing has been pressed, and so we have zero presses, and we want the PWM signal to be zero. And so understand this is like the variable the button press and then this is the variable p w p w m <clears throat> what's the other thing after it's been pressed 10 times so bp is 10 we would then want p w m to be 100 so our two points are the point 00, 0 and the point 0 or the point 10 100 now what i'm telling you is you can't fit a line between those two because all your action is going to occur down here, and then up here you're not going to see any changes. So the last four or five button pushes, you wouldn't see any changes. So we need to fit an exponential between those. And so what we want to see is this would be the point 0, 0, and this would be the point 10, 100. This is the point 10, 100. But we want to come up like this with an exponential. <clears throat> How can we do that? We can do that with this equation. We can say that duty cycle, it's not going to be equal to a linear function. Maybe you'll want me to zoom in a little bit on that. Okay, duty cycle is not going to be a linear function of BP button push. It's going to be an exponential. So I'm going to have some constant that I'm going to raise to which power? To the BP power. I don't know what C is, but we'll figure that out in a minute. And then at zero, I want it to be zero, so I'm going to have to subtract another variable B. So duty cycle and BP button push, those are my two variables. I have to figure out what C and B are. How do I figure out what C and B are? I substitute these points in and then I solve for them. The easiest point to substitute in is the point 0, 0. And so let's put that in and then solve for B. And so the 0 is an initial BP of 0 and PWM of 0. And so the initial duty cycle, the initial duty cycle will be 0. And that, that's that. <clears throat> zero there, and that's going to be equal to C raised to the 
Well, what BP goes with that zero, zero? So I will put a zero here, so it's C raised to the zero minus B. What is anything raised to the zero? Anything raised to the zero is one minus B is equal to zero. And so what do we have? B is equal to one. So I have my first variable, B is equal to one. So now I'll just put DC for duty cycle. Duty cycle is going to be equal to C raised to the BP minus 1. Now how do I solve for C? <clears throat> well, I put the second point in. The point when I have button push is 10, I want the duty cycle to be 100%. So I'm going to have, what is my duty cycle? My duty cycle is going to be 100%. When is it going to be 100%? When button push is equal to 10 and then I subtract my 1 okay move the 1 over I have 101 is equal to C raised to the 10 how do I solve for C I take the 10th root of this the 10th root of this and I have C is equal to 101 <clears throat> and the 10th root of that 101 raised to the 110 so what does C equal C equals 1.5864. You can do that in the calculator. Put 101 in the calculator and raise it to the power of 1 over 10 and you get 1.5864. So what is our calculation? <clears throat> our duty cycle will be equal to 1.5864 raised to what power? Raised to the BP power. How many times the button has been pushed? Minus 1. Boom. <clears throat> that is the equation that we plug in and then every time we press the top button it increments BP okay and then it exponentially increases DC and then we get a smooth beautiful increase in the brightness of the LED <clears throat> all right let me get this set back up down here for you to see I'll see if I can even leave our little equation showing there we're getting very high tech with our graphics here let me back off just a little bit so you can see the whole thing. Okay, I think you can see that pretty good. <clears throat> okay, you got your circuit hooked up. You've done, you've done the hands-on stuff. You've done the math. Now, let's go in and let's start writing some code. <clears throat> I am hooked on to a terminal. You know from the earlier lessons how to terminal into your BeagleBone Black. I'm going to do a clear to <clears throat> get rid of this mess. Okay, so that's cleared. Uh, I'm going to change directory to my home directory, change directory squiggly. What do I have there? You remember I put my Python programs in a folder called MyPython. You can make that by saying mkdir my underscore python and you can get there. I already have that folder so I'm not going to make it again. I'm going to go down into that folder with a change directory cd down into my underscore python and then I do an ls and those are all the programs that I have done so far. <clears throat> so how are we going to uh, what are we going to name this? We've got to create a file. We're going to say nano and I'm going to call it button led because I'm controlling the the, I'm controlling the uh, I'm controlling the brightness of the LED from a button. Okay, boom! We now have a file, so we got to start writing some code. <clears throat> First thing we want to do is import our libraries. <clears throat> We're going to import add a fruit just like I'm doing it here exactly. You've got to get the capitalization right. Add a fruit. Uh, bbio dot gpio as gpio. So we're importing the general purpose input output part of the library. We want to do pulse width modulation. So we're going to have to import add a fruit underscore bbio dot pwm as pwm. If you have a recent version of the BeagleBone Black Rev C, which for me is the Debian Wheezy 7, 
it comes with this library on the operating system so you can just simply import it in the Python program. If you type this in exactly correctly and you get an error, that probably means you don't have the library on your system. You need to go back and do a update and upgrade of your uh, operating system, both update and upgrade, and then you should have this uh, library. Okay. The other library that we're going to need is the uh, sleep function because we need to put some delays in here. So we're going to say uh, <clears throat> from time import sleep. And this will allow me to put delays in in a minute. All right. Now what we need to do is we need to set our pins up. Our LED was connected to on header 9. So I put P9 underscore. It was connected to pin 14. Okay, so it will be p9 underscore 14. <clears throat> Our button 1 was connected to uh, on header 9, so we'll put p9. It was connected to down here pin 23. We have the bottom button, which is button 2 is equal to underscore P9, we're on header 9, and we moved over a little bit, and we are using pin 27. <clears throat> that should have our, our pins defined that we're going to use. we got to set up, set up those pins now, so gpio.setup, and what are we setting up? We're setting up button 1, and we're going to make it a gpio.in. <clears throat> That's saying button one, which is pin 14, or uh, button one, which is pin 23, we want that to be an input. We also are going to do gpio dot, dot setup, and then guess what? Yeah, button two, and it is also a gpio dot in. <clears throat> we also need to get this pin 14 going with pwm, so we're going to do a pwm dot start. Okay, and then we're going to do an LED, comma, zero. Zero is saying I want my initial duty cycle to be zero. So when this thing fires up, the initial duty cycle is going to be zero. So the, the uh, LED will be off. <clears throat> and then this is the frequency. And what works well is a, hertz, a, a frequency of 1,000 hertz. On PWM, it doesn't matter too much what frequency you use, but for most things, 1,000 hertz works. <clears throat> now we need to set up this variable BP, the number of times the button has been pushed. Well, when you first turn on the program, how many times has the button been pushed? None. So we need to set it equal to zero. <clears throat> now we need to loop through and just keep looking and seeing if anybody presses one of these buttons. So how do we loop forever in Python? We do a while and while what? While one and a colon. <clears throat> we tab over. This is indicating we have a while clause start, and then we tab over. How far? Doesn't matter, but you just got to tab over exactly the same on each one. What do I want to see? I want to see if the button has been pushed. I'm going to say if gpio.input, that's doing a read. What do I want to read? I want to read button 1. And then I put a colon for the if clause. Now I've got a tab over because I have to be tabbed in for this if clause. What do I want to do if button one has been pushed? <clears throat> I want to say BP is equal to BP minus one because this button or no on button one that's the up. I'm going to say BP plus one. Button one is up. That makes it get brighter. Okay, <clears throat> so if uh, gpio.input of button one is pressed, if button one is pressed, I'm going to make BP go up because I want that to get brighter. Then just to kind of help me debug, I'm going to say print button <clears throat> one was pressed. And this just lets me see if I'm getting around into the where I need to in the program. You can take it out later, but that'll just help you do be, be doing some debugging. <clears throat> what else do I want to look at? I want to look at if gpio.input. So I'm reading what? I'm reading button 2. 
If button 2 is pressed, what do I want to do? BP equal BP minus 1. Same thing. Print button 2 was pressed. <coughs> okay. Now, <coughs> let's think. If I keep pressing up to 10, and then if I keep press, 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 pressing, it's not going to get any brighter. Okay. But what I don't want is I don't want this to count up because then to dim, I would have to hit 10 times before it started dimming. So I don't want to let BP get above 10. So I'm going to say if BP is, is greater than 10, that means somebody just kept pressing the button over and over and over to set BP equal to 10. So this forces it to stay no greater than <clears throat> no greater than 10. Same thing, if BP is less than 0, then make BP equal 0. So that way, once it's off, you can't go any dimmer than that. Once it's full, you can't go any brighter than that. <clears throat> now, what should I do? I've got to calculate this duty cycle that I'm going to apply to the LED. So what did we say? Duty cycle, I'm just going to say DC for duty cycle, is equal to 1.5864 from the math, from the math, raised to the, how do I do a raised to the in Python? It's shift 8 star star. Okay, so I do a star star. What do I raise it to? I raise it to the BP, the button press. Okay, remember that button press. How many times the button has it been, been pressed? Minus one. Now I know what the duty cycle is. What do I do with the duty cycle? <clears throat> I apply it to that LED pin. So I do PWM dot set duty cycle like that. Where do I want to set the duty cycle? To the LED pin. What do I want to set it to? I want to set it to DC that I just calculated. All right. It's always good to put a delay in here, so I'll put sleep of 0.2. <clears throat> okay. And then there's no really way to gracefully leave. So let's look at this. We import our libraries. We import the time sleep. We're saying the LED is on pin 14 on header P9. Button 1 is 23, button 2 is 27. I set up button 1 and button 2. I start my PWM. I uh, set my initial number of button pushes to 0. And then I loop looking for button pushes. This looks good. How do I save it? Control O, Enter, Control X. Now what do I want to do? I want to run this as a Python program. I am in the same folder with the program, so I don't have to put on any I don't have to put on any uh, path names. The moment of truth. Did I make a mistake? Program's running anyway. Let's turn the lights off so we can see that as good as possible. <coughs> okay, we are now in the dark. You can see the buttons a little bit here. Move this over where you can see me. Okay, I have my finger on button one, which is the up button. If I press this, what you should see on the screen is it should detect that I pressed it, and then we should barely see this coming on. Okay, look at that. Button one was pressed. I might not have gotten my finger off of it quick enough, so this might be like two button presses. Let me take it down one. Okay. Oh, it didn't see my second one. Okay, there it goes. And I took it all the way down, so Okay, there it goes. I'm just holding it to. So that, you can see, is barely, barely on with one button press. Now if I hit it again, it should go off. Okay. It's off. I'll go back on. Okay. And that's on with one press, two presses. You see, you can tell the difference between one and two, three, four, five, Six, seven, look at that, eight, look at that, brighter, brighter, brighter. I think, I lost count, I think that's full bright, but let me try one more. Okay, yeah, that's full bright. Now you see if I keep going up, it doesn't get any brighter, because remember it's holding BP at 10. But now let me come back down. 
Okay, you see up. You see I'm telling the difference between 9 and 10 button pushes. So that's 9, 8, 7. See coming on down, coming on down, coming on down, coming on down. Look at that barely on, barely on and off. Let me press it on one. See just that one, it comes on, it goes off. <clears throat> what I'm trying to show you is you could detect visually the difference between zero button presses and one button press. You see that zero and that's on just one. You can see that. Let me go two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, Okay, now I think I'm all the way up now. Now watch, that's at full brightness 10. I'll go down by just one. Okay, when I went down by one, you could see it, the difference between 10 and 9, and I'll go back up, and you can see that. So you see there's a, a perceptible change between 9 and 10, and there's a perceptible change between 0 and 1. There's a perceptible change between 4 and 5. That is because we created that exponential curve. If we just created a linear curve, it would not have worked so well. This very well could be one of the finest digital button controlled dimmable LEDs ever created. Okay, hope you guys enjoyed the lesson. Uh, we're learning a lot. I hope you guys are following along. If you like these lessons, give me a thumbs up. Think about sharing the lessons with your friends. Let's try to get a little bit of a Beagle Bone Black uh, user, user community started here. It's kind of dead out there right now. Let's see if we can get some people using this. Follow along with me. Thumbs up. Share the video. Think about subscribing to the channel. Paul McWhorter, toptechboy.com. I will talk to you guys later.